Hi everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables, where I share the who, what, where, why, when, and how of my furniture flips. Today's story begins with a look back at the era our protagonist was created for, the sometimes celebrated, but still much maligned 80s. In the 80s, our love of tech, and also very orangey oak, crash together to create all kinds of furniture. Oak pieces with rounded edges and corners and almost Terminator-like joints were everywhere. Some are still considered beautiful and valuable in their original state, but many, like our time-worn hero of today's story, are so very dated. And so they linger, unwanted and unloved. When Mr. Klein saw this 80s TV stand I scooped for free from Facebook Marketplace, he said, Really? I think he began to have visions of Tab Cola and getting up to change the channel to the other channel. But I'm thinking there's some quality construction and quality design here. Sure, she's got those smoky brown glass doors and a drawer that was designed specifically to house VHS tapes with a very prominent lock, something I don't care to think about for too long. But I think that this two-story tape drawer with its super cool recessed pulls can be reimagined and adapted for a new modern purpose. All right, 80s baby, let's do this. First, I removed her old broken lock. I considered just replacing this. You can get a replacement lock just like it from Amazon for about six bucks, but I really wanted to create an uninterrupted line for this cool long door. Plus the lock just kind of makes the piece look more office -y. So next I took out that sturdy solid shelf and then carefully removed these old brown glass doors. I'm sure there are some folks who are thinking, no, don't remove those. They're kind of cool and vintage, but I really wanted the piece to have that nice open shelving look. Then it was time to take off this revolving table. I was super happy to see how easy it was. I just unscrewed and lifted it off. At this point, I took a closer look at these deep joint lines and noticed just how remarkably deep they were. You can also see that some of the original material that was used as grout or glue is looking pretty rough. So I knew I would need to address that. Okay, continuing with the prep, I removed those little sunken plastic door hardware pieces and then I tackled that magnetic closer opener that had apparently been installed with some kind of magical curse. Man, this thing was stubborn and it took me forever. And here is where I almost destroy the camera right out there. <laughs> but huzzah, I was victorious and we no longer have those snake eye magnetic uh, hardware staring at us. Um, I'll just need to do a little bit of sanding under there and a little dab of glue, but she's still just absolutely solid as a rock. You might have noticed from before that this two-story drawer has been lined with some kind of sticky black felt fabric. Why? Just why? I don't know. And why am I not wearing gloves for this part? All right, happily, we are ready for cleaning. It was a warm, dry day here in California. Shocking, right? Yes. Um, so <laughs> when I clean, <laughs> I, I tend to do this. I tend to splash about. You don't have to splash around like a sea otter. Um, but cleaning your piece really well is super important. Use a TSP or other degreaser like Dawn dishwashing soap and make sure you rinse your piece really, really well. All right, after my piece was completely clean and dry, it was time to do some scuff sanding. I used my orbital sander and a 220 grit disc. Um, the scuff sanding is really going to help give your paint something to grab onto. This piece was fairly slippery and that can really stop your paint from adhering well. I was so encouraged by what I was seeing as I sanded the shelf that I decided I didn't want to paint it or the long drawer. Watch as the shelf goes from this heated 80s orange to a more modern cool tone. So because I decided to prep them to stay in a natural raw oak tone, they were sanded with 80, then 150, and then 220 grit discs. All 
right time to clean up the dust. I love using my blower to get the majority of the dust and then come back in with a tack cloth or a damp rag for the rest. All right, it is time to give these old joints some TLC. I took my Minwax wood filler and just kind of started going to town. You can see my technique is messy, <laughs> but it's okay, it gets the job done. My goal with all this filling was not to try and hide the construction design of this piece, but more just to refresh it. So we will still see those machine-like lines, but they will just be more uniform and less deep. I filled the two holes from the old door hardware, as well as that long groove in the front of the piece where the doors sat when they were closed. And I filled the top holes um, on the top of the piece that were left over from that revolving table. You can see I'm using quite a bit of product here on these top holes. I'm, I'm really um, deliberately doing an overfill. That way I know I can come back in and when I sand, that will be nice and flush. There was a very deep groove on one side of the bottom shelf. And so because I didn't want to have to get back there and sand, I grabbed my caulking gun. Um, this is a great trick for spots like this that may be hard to reach. I smoothed out the line with my finger after I had dipped it in some water and then I applied another line and then cleaned that all up with a damp paper towel and then decided it could use one more layer. This material is paintable, it's very forgiving, and this is a great trick actually when you're working with furniture. That was a lot of filler, so I let that dry overnight and then came back in with a 220 sanding disc over a nice squishy sanding sponge so that I could gently get around those rounded 80s corners and remove all of the excess. Okay, it is time to prime. I am using Dixie Bell's primer in gray. It is true that with chalk paint, priming isn't technically necessary, but with all of that wood filler I've done with this piece, the primer will really help seal all that in and unify the surface for painting. And it will act as a great insurance policy against any bleed through. I typically like to use a mini roller for priming, but I was out of them at day, so I'm just using a standard painter's brush. Hooray, time to paint. I am so excited to paint in this color. It's a new one for me. This is Stormy Seas by Dixie Bell. You can see I'm spraying my brush. Chalk paint dries quickly while you're working with it, but it plays really well with water, so you can thin out the paint a little, you can mist your piece as you work, and you can mist or spray whatever paintbrush you are using. And all of this just really helps the paint to glide over the surface and leave a smoother finish. Oh, this color. It's beautiful, super on point tone is going to really help catapult our tired and worn out main character into current times and maybe start to see herself in a whole new way. I painted the top, the sides, the frame and the entire inside of the piece. I was thinking that most likely I would be adding a peelable wallpaper to the back wall as an accent, but I always like to finish the back of the piece regardless. That way, whenever the paper is tired or dated, it can be easily removed and the piece is still nicely finished. There she is with her first coat all, oops, okay. Mr. Spot. <laughs> okay. First coat done now, and she's looking good. I gave that first coat about three, three and a half hours to dry, and then I came back in and did a second coat all over using long, unbroken strokes to help give her more of a smooth, modern finish.
Remember our lock hole? Well, it was finally time to fix that up. The first thing I did was to cut down a wooden dowel and using some wood glue, put that into place. After that glue had dried completely, I filled the rest of the hole with some more of that Minwax wood filler and then let that sit and dry for a few hours. While that was drying, it was time to give this lady her new shoes. Oh, I was so excited. I unscrewed her old plastic casters Ouch, I really should have been wearing gloves <laughs> for this part, but I was so excited, couldn't wait. There they are. I lined up these new casters about a quarter of an inch from the edge of the particle board that was already there. I put that first screw in fairly snugly, but not so tight that I couldn't easily adjust the caster base and then just screwed in the remaining three screws. I have to tell you, I was amazed at the price of these furniture casters. They were $15.99 for a set of four on Amazon. When I decided to replace the old plastic ones, I was honestly expecting to pay more like four times that. This style comes with a break and you can get them with different base attachments. So if you have a piece of furniture that could use some new wheels, check these out in the link below. Here are her new wheels next to the old plastic ones. Like night and day, my friends. All right, back to our double decker drawer. After everything had dried, I came back in with a 220 sandpaper and just got it nice and clean and smooth. And then I was ready to get out my new Coconix kit. This kit from Coconix um, I just got from Amazon contains everything you might need to do a small faux wood repair like this. It comes with all of these colors and wood putty and this little brush and a mini pot to mix some paint into. I put two colors into the mini pot, uh, a little bit of the oak and a little bit of the maple, which is a little bit lighter, and then blended some of them together. So I essentially had three colors that I was working with. I actually decided to use my daughter's mini brush, mini, 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 mini brush, just so I could go as slowly as I wanted and have as much control as possible. Right about now, I'll admit I was thinking, would it really have been so terrible just to have replaced the lock? <laughs> But I really did want to have that two-story door be a feature with a beautiful uninterrupted line. And I also just really kind of wanted to give this a whirl. After the first coat dried, I brought the drawer inside so that I could work with it in the natural inside light. I actually think this is really key. And I just did a little bit more painting and a little bit more blending. <laughs> And honestly, you could go down a rabbit hole of faux painting for days if you let yourself. But after a little more work, I looked at it vertically and I decided it was pretty good. Not perfection, but I was happy with it and definitely happier than if I had just replaced the lock. To give our hero some flair, I chose this super cool graphic peel and stick paper by New Wallpaper, N-U Wallpaper called Groovy Garden. I purchased this from Amazon, the link is below, and I am in love with this boho whimsical design and its super modern saturated colors. They look incredible with stormy seas. Whenever I use peelable wallpaper, my first piece goes on great, like this. And then my second piece goes on like this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yikes. But I'm wanting to share this part of the story to show you as long as it's good quality, thicker paper, and I've had great luck so far with this brand, just how forgiving this paper can be. I got out my paper smoother and knife and also a pair of scissors and just started smoothing and trimming and 
smoothing some more and trimming some more and it just always ends up looking great and it's a fun non-permanent way to add a great hit of style to any outdated piece. Okay, finally time to seal her up. I am using Dixie Belle's Easy Peasy Wax Spray. This stuff is amazing. You literally spray it on and then using a lint-free rag, spread it out and just kind of work it in and wipe up any excess. You can really see how that dry chalk paint starts to glow and gleam as it absorbs the wax. It's like watching your piece have an epiphany right before your eyes. I applied this wax over all of the new paint and it took six hours for this to cure. For both the shelf and the drawer, which I'm leaving au naturel, I'm going to be using two coats of the Dixie Belle Clear Coat in flat to seal them up and give them a good layer of protection. Right now, I'm really liking using a fan brush or a flatter brush for applying liquid top coat. I find it helps me keep that wet edge and gives a smoother application. When applying the top coat, it's important to not go back over it once it's laid down. And it's totally normal for it to appear milky when it's wet and the wood to darken. But as it dries, it levels out and lightens back up. Lastly, I used a little bit of Big Mama's Butter by Dixie Belle to help smooth out the opening and closing action of that very tall drawer and also to give it an amazing fragrance. This wax smells like an orange grove. All right, do you remember our down on her luck hero from the top of our story? And here she is now. <music> If you still wanted to use this piece as a TV stand, this double-decker drawer could be great for gaming components or remote controls, but look how it can accommodate these bottles. What a swanky new job for our 80s TV stand as a refreshed, ultra-cool 21st century bar. Her Stormy Seas base is really allowing the natural wood drawer to sing. Even with its funky back wallpaper and brass covered casters, to me, the refreshed tape drawer is really the star of the show. With its modern inset pulls, rounded and exaggerated machine-like joints and proven quality construction, I think the 80s furniture era has proven it still has a lot to offer. If you are interested in the numbers, and why not? The numbers are an important part of the story. My costs were $55, and I listed and sold the piece for $195, giving me a profit of $140. Not that amazing, but here's the story behind those numbers. That weekend just happened to be completely crazy and I just wanted to get the piece sold and on its way to its new owner. And so I deliberately did not price it aggressively and it showed. Within hours, I had almost 700 views and multiple offers. I think I could have sold 10 of these that weekend if I had had them. If I had priced it at about 225, 235, I think it would have gone just as quickly. And if time weren't an issue, I could have maybe even gone higher. You know, it's not all about the numbers, but it's definitely a part of this story that I will be remembering for the future. So what do you think? Was our 80s hero successfully transformed and redeemed? I am pleased to say that she definitely won over Mr. Klein in the end. and. I think he was even a little sad to see her go. If you'd like to see more stories of furniture redesigns and flips, please hit that subscribe button before you go. Give me a thumbs up and a comment about today's story. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I'll see you next time for more.
Furniture Fables.